On February 18, 1954, a headline appeared in the Melbourne Sun, opening tonight at 6.30, Australia's first drive-in theatre. The skyline in Burwood became the first of more than 330 drive-ins to be built across Australia and changed the way many Australians saw movies forever. Approximately 20 minutes down the M1 highway, just north of Australia's tourist playground, the Gold Coast, and a short distance from South Brisbane, in the middle of one of Queensland's fastest growing areas, the semi-industrial region of Yatla, lies one of Australia's few remaining icons, the drive-in theatre. Peter is part owner, along with his brother Stephen, of the Yatla Drive-In, making them third generation owners and managers. It was called the Beanley Drive-In and has been in Peter's family since it opened on Sunday 27th of October 1974 and it is Australia's most modern drive-in. What does the drive-in theatre offer moviegoers that the modern theatres cannot compete with? The, dri the drive-in theatre has got a lot of advantages, I believe, over the traditional uh, cinema because it's, it's more comfortable, you can come in your pyjamas if you like, you can, you can bring your own food and drinks, you can set up, it's more of a relaxed atmosphere and a lot of people bring their deck chairs and blankets and rugs and pillows and some even bring panel vans and utilities and sit in the back and it's very friendly, you see a lot of people talking to each other, they park next to each other and they have a good chat before the movie starts, it's more relaxed I think. Peter explains industry changes at the drive-in, making it more appealing to the public. And here we have a traditional window speaker that was installed in the drive-in in 1974. Half the theatre is uh, still have these operational, and the other half of the theatre you get to tune into your radio, which is 999 FM on field number one, and then on field number two is 105 FM. And a lot of people like that because they get the good stereo surround in their car. And the FM radio came into existence in the mid 90s, which. Uh, which was a, a good for the theatre because it sort of competed with the multiplexes a little bit with sound quality. The advent of in-car FM radio is one of the reasons for growing popularity, contributing to the resurgence of the drive-in. I've been coming to the drive-in for 40 years now. The main change that I've, well, two main changes I've seen have been twin screens drive-in theatres now, and also to the um, Sydney Sound where you can uh, get the sound over your car radio instead of having to attach a speaker to your car. The two main changes that I've noticed in those 40 years. The Beanley Drive-In was originally one screen uh, when it was first built and we have upgraded that screen. We've put a corrugated iron face on it which is uh, better for wet weather conditions and in 2003 we built a second screen up there to give customers more choice uh, with movies. The older generation, or the baby boomers, not wanting to lose the experience of the drive-in theatre and the nostalgic memories it has to offer in today's modern society. I've uh, been coming to drive-ins for uh, probably 25 years, I suppose, and uh, pretty much the same as what they've always been. Uh, uh, just cars and movies, there's not much more to it than that. Compared to uh, 25 years ago, there's probably more people coming to the especially this drive-in, I suppose, because uh, it's the only one left, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, if you haven't been to the drive-in theatre before, you'll probably experience something that you've never really experienced before in regards to seeing a movie because it's sort of a step back in time and it gives you a feeling like like when you see the movie Grease with John Travolta, how it was in the old days and you see the rock and roll diner, we've got statues of Elvis Presley, Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, Cadillac couches. It's a real 50s sort of feel and we serve 50s food as well and um, it's just a different experience and we get a lot of comments from first timers how 
how they've never been before and how they love it and they want to come back. It's just a great way of seeing two new movies under the stars. They have organised a biannual event of nostalgia. Twice a year, the dependable rockers are in town for a night of rock and roll and to show off their passion for everything two wheels and four. Uh, my first time experience of driving was basically about uh, 30 years ago with, uh, when I was uh, courting my wife down in Cowra. We went to Young, that was the closest picture theatre at the time. And uh, it, was a, it was a great, great time. Um, we didn't go to see the movie of course, but uh, I, I never had a P-Van which was the, uh, the thing of those days. Um, but going to the picture theatre here is just the excitement of um, looking at the old cars and uh, the music and uh, the interaction with all the people that come along because they're really here to be enjoy the evening and, and the atmosphere. Who knows, but for now, the drive-in has not only survived due to the baby boomers, but a whole new generation. Generation X and Generation Y are discovering the drive-in and a trip back in time. And to share the memories and experiences with the older generation. The well, last time I went to a drive-in was in Townsville when the range, Harvey's Range was open. That's since been bulldozed and turned into a housing estate. About 10 years ago is probably the last I could remember. Probably when I was a kid, I'd imagine. I haven't been to the one here at Yatla before, so tonight's the first night. Last time I tried to come, it was so packed the traffic was out to the motorway, so we decided to give it a miss that night, so it's obviously very popular. This car I've owned now uh, for over 44 years. It's been used, um, it's been an expo, and the Bodger Widgee reunion, we went back to Wynnum after 30 years, and, uh, <clears throat> and of course it's just gone through the new Clem Jones Tunnel, we're one of the first cars through there, but it's got over a million kilometres on it now, this car, and it's still going strong. It's a 1951 Ford Custom. Originally they're made in Canada and they come down to a knockdown version to Australia and they're assembled in Australia. And um, they've got the old side valve V8 engine. This one's modified a bit now. It's got a five-speed gearbox in it and a higher ratio diff, which makes it an absolutely fabulous cruiser on the road. So, going to the drive-in, I'd say it's 1956, which would have been nearly the start of the drive-ins. Uh, my wife, I married her, what, in 64? and I took her out when she was 16 year old and she lived at Cooper's Plains <clears throat> we used to go to the Cooper's Plains drive into the old skyline and of course today uh, it's an estate now, it's all just covered in houses and this would be one of the last ones that I know of around here locally now that we still frequent with because dependable rockers they have it twice a year here and uh, we come to that event every time you know got to come, it's tradition, we've got to come along I know the Purple People Eater was one of the ones we went to see back probably what a 1957 something like that 58 but um, I, I think we all go to the movies just as it's a matter of congregating there more so than what the movies are on and when you take a girlfriend I guess you don't worry about the movie and I think television sort of ruined it all you know we can sit at home now and watch the same movies in the comfort of our house and drink cold drinks and sit back in the lounge chair and relax instead of going out like we are now in the rain watching the movies. My father used to run the theatre in the 70s and the 80s and it has changed a little bit uh, because now we have the, the latest sound and also the customers have changed because we get a lot of um, younger people coming now that haven't been to the theatre before and uh, they're from their teens up until the 30s, that would be 80% of our market. Um, the projection equipment is still the same because it works well and it's original and um, film has always been around, it hasn't really changed. So yeah, the, the, everything's quite stable at the drive-in. 
there will come a time where it may be more financially viable to close and sell the land like many others, subsidise the losses from the global financial crisis and move on. And then again, it may be a choice of staying open and becoming an even greater icon in the years to follow. I think this theatre will be here for a long time to come. Uh, as my father owned it, I'd like to carry it on for the next 10, 20 years at least, as long as it, there's still customers coming and it's still doing okay and people enjoy the theatre, I'd, I'd like to keep it going.